let's talk about the getignore file and how you need to be using it for all your projects. So if you're new to Git or source control in general, the first thing that might come to your mind is, but why? And it's actually quite a simple answer. As you're working on a project, you tend to accumulate files that you don't want to push out to your repository. These files can include log files, virtual environment files, as well as credential or environment variable files. To start using getignore, all you need to add is a getignore file to your project and specify the file types that you want to ignore. Let's have a look at a practical example of how we can implement this. All right, so I have a very simple project here and in it I have a Python script, a readme, and then it also has a log file, a virtual environment directory, and an input directory with a spreadsheet. Now when I push this out to GitHub, I only want my application file as well as my readme to go. I don't want my virtual environment folder as well as the log file or input spreadsheet to be sent over to GitHub. It's bad practice and it could actually be a security concern because these files could give information in regards to my system. So I want to avoid it at all costs. So before I go ahead and add the getignore file, I'm just going to have a look here. And if you do a get status, you can see that get has these four files, but it isn't tracking the changes until I actually stage them through get add star. Now that I've added them, if I do a get status, you can see that it's added all those files. Now, since I don't want those files to get staged or committed, I'm going to go ahead and do a get reset. And now I'm going to add the get ignore. So I'll go new file dot get ignore. And I did not spell that correctly. It's get ignore. All right, now I got the little icon. So I know this is a good get ignore file. And then within here, my first line, I'm going to put star dot log. And this is acting as a wildcard and it's matching anything that ends in dot log. So this is going to make it so when I run the get add command, it's not going to add the log file. The next thing I'm going to do is go back into my get ignore file and then I'm going to add the directory slash vnv slash and this is going to make it so it ignores my virtual environment folder. The next thing I'm going to do is just add in the input directory and do a slash and then a star dot star dot xlsx and that should match this file. If you look on the left hand side of uh, Visual Studio Code and look at the source control section. Now it only sees two possible candidate changes, which is the getignore file itself and my app. And if we do a get status, we can see that these are the only candidate files to add. It no longer gives us the option to add the log file or the input spreadsheet. So I'm going to go ahead and do my get add star command. And if I do a git status again, you can see those files have been added. So I'll do a git commit. And I can even do a git push origin master here. And then when I pull up GitHub, I can see that the readme, the myapp.py, and the getignore file are the only thing added. It didn't add those other files and folders that I told it to ignore. Now, say for example, you had a specific file that you wanted to make sure it gets added to your source control, even though it matches with the get ignore. So let's do that. Let's make another log file. I'll go new file and we'll go special.log. And if we do get status, we can see that it doesn't see it, but we can go get add F and then go special.log. And then if we do get status, we can see that adding the dash F and manually putting in the file name, we're able to get that log file added and committed. And if I do a get push origin master, you can see the special log file is there. Now say I added in changes. Now 
Now if I do get status, you can see that it's already tracking this file, so the get ignore does not matter. So I can add this again, even through just star now, since it's already tracking the file. And you can see it's added. I'm going to reset the head here by doing get reset head. And uh, now if we do get status, we can see that it's modified, but we haven't staged the change. And now I'm going to show you uh, how you can remove a file from being tracked and then get ignore will start ignoring it again. So to remove this file from being tracked, we're going to go get remove and I'm going to add the cached flag here and then I'll specify the file name which is special.log and now when I do a get status we can see that it's deleted And now I'm going to commit this change. And if I do a git push origin master, you'll see that it's removed from the GitHub repository and it's no longer being tracked. So you can see that it's no longer in the GitHub repository. And if we do git status, you can see that it's no longer tracking this file so it doesn't show up on the git status message. And it doesn't matter if we make any changes to it at all it still will not show up. Anyways, that's all I really wanted to show for this video. I just sort of wanted to get into the basics of the get ignore file and how to get started. There's plenty of documentation out there on the get SCM website for you to check out if you want to get more specific with your get ignore files. And uh, if you need any help, just join our discord channel. Anyways, thanks again for everyone that's been subscribing. It really motivates me to continue creating this content and I hope to see you all in the next video.